Good morning, folks. Top story is a new island appearing off the coast of Germany. Can you say geologic jumble? Interesting article on Hong Kong pollution, but an even more interesting reference to a report here, a thousand page report of the climate effects in the United States. Can any of you guys actually find a link to this report? Royal Society claiming quick actions are needed to avoid a total collapse of global society. This is exactly what it sounds like with comments from some of the royals. Virgin Islands celebrating that five pointer they had by dancing the night away with smaller quakes. Far Eastern Canada catching the edge of Gandalf having about as bad a weather as you could imagine. I'll come back to that. Off the Carolina coastline, hundreds of thousands of fish are washing up dead. This red haboob is quite the sight. We'll take a moment and look at some of the pictures coming out of Western Australia. This is caused by a large and significant air mass movement by Cyclone Norell, and frankly, this might be all Australians get to see of Norell, which kicked west enough to avoid major landfall. You'll notice northernmost Europe is actually a little warmer than it is just south of it. Helical cloud motion is bringing southern warmer air up and sliding arctic air in south of it. The other spinning cloud formation west of that will bring precipitation at the outer belt. Now while it's cold enough up here to make Gandalf's effect a true winter nightmare, the leading edge of Gandalf is much warmer than the backside, like record warm. How and why does the temperature delta look like this? Well, blue lows in the northern hemisphere want to spin counterclockwise, but these are connected so they form a convergence line, with air warm rushing all up the east and the cold rushing down the trailing edge. I know this says tomorrow, but they put it out yesterday. Tonight's watch zone is on that convergence line. On to space weather, the bar toll shows cosmic ray density below 100, slightly down from yesterday. Two significant solar wind events. First, on the left, around 1200 UTC, the solar wind dropped below 300 kilometers per second in the yellow. That's too low. Then about 12 hours later, just before the new day UTC, we see a general peak in the yellow and the orange. That's the speed and density of the solar wind. This caused very, very minor disturbances of the magnetic shield. Inductions were taken, but without major plasma penetration, although there was a short-lived proton radiation event at the polar regions during that time. This is good news, folks. Two M flares. No major X flares, no major CMEs, maybe a little bit of ejecta headed our way, but we still need more moderate eruptions. Looking at the contenders, you'll remember these down here used to have strong complexity in both polarities. Up north of that made the M flare about a week ago, riding high when he crested only to decay and get ready to die now, leaving us with one region of concern. You can actually see he's got a little shadow cresting behind and north of him. Well, I no longer see a delta spot in this group. It is still beta gamma, but losing power fast. I doubt she's done, but we're going to need a better showing. For those following the planets, Venus heliocentrically opposes Jupiter in four days. Meanwhile, Mercury and Earth are set to oppose the Sun just after that, which also counts as the geocentric conjunction of Mercury and the Sun. Also, Mars is heliocentrically conjoining Neptune to round out that set. Geomagnetic conditions during that lineup are yet unknown, with this active region set to face Earth. I see no coronal holes ready to face Earth, so hopefully the quake watch will be minor. We've got two M flares. Let's ask for a few more, folks. Eyes open. No fear at 625 AM Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.